The Empathic Supernova What is the Empathic Supernova? Well, let's get one thing straight from the very beginning. You can't be an empathic supernova. It is an event, a behavior, a happening, an occurrence. There are people that say, hey, HG, I'm an empathic supernova. No, you're not. You can't be one. You might cause one to occur. You might go supernova, but you can't be one. And therefore, fair warning about the correct use of this phenomenon. If you insist on saying that you are an empathic supernova, then you will be lashed to a gatepost and you will be subjected to 24 hours of Celine Dion played at full volume for the rest of your natural life. You have been warned. Also, you do not determine that you have gone supernova, but rather it is a set of events which can then be established to ascertain externally that this is what has occurred. In order for there to be the empathic supernova, this can only occur as a consequence of the behaviour of a super-empath. How do you know what type of empath you are? Empaths, and they exist contrary to what other people might suggest, they do. I regularly dine on them, so I should know that empaths come within four schools. This is the empathic group. This includes the codependent, the super-empath, the contagion empath, and the standard empath. Somebody who is an empath has both narcissistic and empathic traits. However, your empathic traits outnumber and outweigh your narcissistic traits. Some people in this group have strong narcissistic traits, but even stronger empathic ones. Some can have strong empathic groups and very weak narcissistic traits. Some might have weak narcissistic traits and moderately strong empathic traits. There are varying degrees. It is unusual to find an individual belonging wholly to one school. Instead, you will have representation most of the time from at least two of the schools, maybe three and maybe four. If you want to understand if you are an empath and which empathic group you belong to, your school and the cadre, and I will be talking about the cadres on another occasion, use the link beneath the video and that will take you to more information about the process of how you are externally determined to be ascertained as to whether you are an empath or not. And if you are, what this means, and furthermore, the relevant proportions of school and cadre. By way of example, if you belong to the empath group, then you might be, for instance, a majority super empath with a significant, significant standard minority element and an insignificant contagion minority element. Or, you might be a majority codependent empath with a strong, significant, super minority element. There are varying proportions. Most people have a majority categorization and one or more significant or insignificant minority elements. The, signif the minority elements are labeled as either strong, minority, significant minority, or insignificant minority. Strong naturally being the largest of the minority elements. So, you might be a majority standard empath with a significant contagion minority element. Some people are hybrids, meaning that they have no majority element and they have two, three, or four aspects from the group with none prevailing. That is more unusual. Most people have a majority. And therefore, if, for instance, you're a majority super empath, you would say, I am, in effect, a super empath. Having explained all of that is important because an individual who goes empathic supernova can only have super empath within them. 
they will either be a majority super empath or they will have a strong or significant minority element. Not insignificant. That is not enough to power the supernova event. So having undertaken the empath detector consultation and being determined to have had the relevant aspects of super empath, either majority, strong minority, or significant minority, that is the precursor for a supernova event. If you don't have them, but you believe you've gone supernova, you have not. And that is something called the cliff event, which will be determined and discussed on another occasion. So accordingly, the empathic supernova only originates from somebody who is a super empath. And in that, the super empath is an excellent provider of fuel and comes with a confidence, a feistiness, a fieriness in differing proportions dependent upon the percentage extent of their super empath qualities. But nevertheless, it proves most tempting to our kind. Majority super empaths are favoured by the ultra and greater narcissists. Upper mid-range also. Those with a strong minority element tend to be favoured by upper lesser B and upper lesser A. Lower lesser and middle lesser, whilst tempted by them, will struggle to control them. Ditto lower mid-range. Middle mid-range and type A and type B are also drawn and do have some capability for controlling the super empath, but they will struggle. The ones that are more able to do so appertain to upper mid-range and moreover greater and ultra. The super empath sees his or her role as helping, fixing, healing and bringing goodness to those around them. There is, if you like, something of the warrior about them. They have considerable energy, they are capable, and they have a significant capacity for sustaining our abuse that makes them a considerably attractive prospect. They don't roll over and doormat. The codependent, for instance, can sustain considerable abuse, and sudden, suddenly, like a light being extinguished, that is it. They are gone. They break down. The standard empath can also sustain our manipulations, but their slide is slower and more gradual, chipped away at. The contagion also can sustain a reasonable degree of abuse, but rather than break down, the contagion tends to disappear, having to divest themselves of the negative energy that they are experiencing as a consequence of the behaviour of the narcissist. However, the super empath blessed with the vast capacity for empathy and goodness, is someone who can actually sustain a lengthy campaign of abuse without withdrawal, without breaking down, and without a steady erosion. There is no slide downwards with this individual like the standard empath. There is no sudden collapse like the codependent, and there is no necessity of instantaneous withdrawal to cleanse and to purify like the contagion. The trait makeup of the super empath is different from their cousins in the empathic group. Whereas the codependent has strong and many empathic traits with little and low narcissistic traits, and the standard empath has a moderate mix of both, but relatively uh, strong but stronger empathic traits, the super empath has a different constitution. The super empath invariably has significant and often quite strong narcissistic traits. However, their empathic traits are even stronger and more numerous. This arrangement is not problematic. Liken the super empath's narcissistic makeup to the light from a candle and their empathic makeup the light from a spotlight. The intensity of the spotlight is so bright that the candlelight may barely be noticed. Accordingly, the narcissistic element to the super empath will manifest but in a healthy way, save when they go supernova. supernova. The super empath ordinarily behaves in an empathic way and thus is a target for our kind. There comes a time, however, 
that the abusive behaviour meted out by the narcissist against the super empath is not acceptable. And a key component of this is that the super empath reacts at a much earlier stage than any other empath in the group to this abuse. Rather than switch off or slide into decline, the super empath essentially decides this is enough. They may not necessarily know that they're dealing with a narcissist, but they will recognize that the behavior being meted out against them is unacceptable, intolerable, and something has to be done. It might be that the super empath escapes, so they don't retreat into hibernation like the contagion, but rather they decide, that is it, I am escaping, and they distance themselves from the narcissist. On other occasions, however, they will enter into a supernova mode. When this occurs, there is a natural dimming of the empathic traits. The external stressor of our behaviour, namely the abuse, grinds down these empathic traits and reduces the emotional empathy of the super-empath. The empathic traits cannot be shut off because they are wired, in effect, into the empath's DNA. Moreover, this dimming of the empathic traits can only be for a short period of time. It isn't permanent these empathic traits will return. The naturally strong empathic nature of the super empath means that these traits will blaze bright once again. However, when this dimming takes place, the gap between the empathic traits and the narcissistic traits in the super empath lessens. And so then the narcissistic traits come to the fore and are more prevalent. They don't dominate forever, they don't take over permanently, but in effect, they are like allowed to shine. The spotlight is dimmed, the candlelight then becomes much brighter. And therefore, whereas in our kind, the application of our narcissistic traits is completely unfettered, because we have no empathic traits, meaning that always our traits are directed in a malevolent, misleading, false, harmful and destructive manner. Ordinarily, the super empaths' narcissistic traits are applied as healthy narcissism, but when there is this dimming, there is still some empathic traits relevant, and therefore they don't lash out randomly against all, but rather the empathic supernova is a directed event as against the narcissist. This means that at an earlier stage than any other victim, the empathic individual that is a super empath that goes supernova will fight back against our kind whilst remaining in the relationship with us. They will reduce and even possibly shut off the fuel provision. They will engage in conscious manipulation of us, having learned how to effect it to a large extent from their accompanying journey with our kind. The super empath will issue a lot of challenge fuel or and or wound, striking blow upon blow against the narcissist. It is worth repeating that the super empath does not necessarily know that they are with a narcissist, they may only realize this later, but rather they know that something is very wrong in the relationship and something must be done about it. Accordingly, when some people ask the question, can you become a narcissist from being with a narcissist or can I pick up narcissistic traits from my experience of being entangled with a narcissist or even the dreaded question, can you get narcissistic fleas, which is such a stupid question, the answer remains no. But if you find that you are exhibiting such traits in a sustained manner and you have the relevant constituent parts of being a super empath, and you're deploying them against the narcissist, what has happened is that your inherent narcissistic traits have come to greater prominence. You are still able to keep them under control. You are not allowing them to harm or hurt innocent parties, but rather you are applying them against the narcissist in order to strike back. You always had these traits. You haven't gained them by virtue of being with us. You might have honed them somewhat in terms of conscious manipulation, but what really drives this is the fact that our behavior towards you wears down your empathic traits so that the strong narcissistic traits that the super empath possesses are exposed 
and come to the fore, and thus there is the supernova event. The effect against us is varied. A lesser narcissist affected by the supernova will disengage immediately with a blaze of igniting fury as he seeks to escape this sudden turning of the tables. He must get away from this empowered super-empath and find a new primary source immediately. This blazing supernova of power is too great for him to deal with and causes him considerable difficulty through either the repeated challenge even though fuel is being provided or where there is a cessation of fuel and, the, and wounding caused by repeated behaviours which amount to the wounding of this lesser narcissist. This explosion of fighting back is beyond the capabilities of the lesser to sustain, control and confine it and instead the repeated challenge threatens the narcissist's control to such an extent that he is forced into the third assertion of control, withdrawal, and must disengage from the super empath who has gone supernova. And the lesser must either quickly promote an ongoing intimate partner secondary source who is waiting in the wings, possibly resulting in somebody being overpromoted, or hastily find a new primary source, which can often result in a panic pick. The mid-range narcissist will invariably find himself in a tormented loop as he tries to assert control. He, being an unaware narcissist, will not comprehend truly what is occurring. He will not want to lose the super empath because of the brilliant fuel provision, but he's finding that his or her ability to manipulate and the reasonable degree of calculation uh, that occurs with instinctive planning for the upper mid-range narcissist is being sorely tested. He will try to assert his control through passive-aggressive means where lower mid-range and especially middle mid-range or type A and type B. The upper mid-range will lash out in a serious, direct and vociferous manner. The middle mid-range will plead the super empath to stop and why can't you be good to me, doling out pity play and sympathy symphonies in order to try and achieve superiority gain. However, either the super empath sustains the supernova behaviour, forcing usually the lower mid-range and the middle mid-range as to disengage and break off, or they cling on trying to impose further manipulations, triangulating with perhaps an alternative appliance. The upper mid-ranger will fight back, but even he may well find that he has been bested by the supernova, causing him to break off. Indeed, the upper mid-ranger, with a larger fuel matrix, will fight back for a short period of time before essentially realising instinctively that this is a fight that cannot be won and therefore will disengage, thus asserting control that way, and shift to an alternative intimate partner secondary sources. So, in general, the mid-range narcissist will try and hold on for a period of time. Imagine they are on some fairground ride, and they're gripping the ride with their fingers, the velocity increasing so that the lower mid-range is suddenly flung from the ride with a shrieking yell. The middle mid-rangers crying and moaning and whinging about the treatment that they are being afforded, but still trying to cling on, hoping to persuade you to change your mind and stop the supernova. But indeed, they are then forced to slink away. The upper mid-ranger will hold on for a while and then realise instinctively this is getting him nowhere and therefore, in order to assert control, will jettison by disengaging from you and move to somebody else. The greater narcissist will rail against this insurrection and fight back. The greater narcissist will draw on the fuel from alternative sources that he has, usually IPSSs, along with fuel from those non-intimate secondary sources which are in his inner and outer circle friends. He will relish the challenge shown by the super empath, and a real battle of wills ensues, as each combatant deploys manipulation after manipulation against one another consciously. This hammer and tongs clash of the titans sees the super empath applying their narcissistic traits and what they will have picked up from the 
ensnarement with the greater narcissist, similar in a way to the apprentice turning on his or her master, and the old hand then seeks to slap down the irreverent upstart. The super-empath may decide to withdraw and escape, satisfied that in effect that they have made their mark and scarred the greater. The greater may ultimately recognise that only a stalemate, for now, can ensue, and breaks off. Disengaging from the super-empath and focuses on the acquisition of a new primary source, or more likely, the promotion of an already ensnared IPSS who is waiting in the wings. The greater, however, although breaking off from the stalemate, will not leave matters there. A note has been made to rejoin battle in due course, and bring that super-empath to heel through malign follow-up hoovers at the appropriate juncture, most likely when the super-empath is not expecting them. The empathic supernova is an event, and this is when the super-empath determines that enough is enough, and therefore empathic traits are reduced, allowing the narcissistic traits to come to the fore, and in so doing, he or she trains their sights consciously and deliberately on making life difficult, miserable, and awkward for the narcissist. In effect, they behave like the narcissist, although they are not one and nor have they turned into one. This is why many of our kind proceed with caution with the super-empath. They are tempting prospects because of the fuel provision, their feistiness, and the fire that they exhibit. But many narcissists struggle to keep them under control, and especially, of course, when the supernova event occurs. The super-empath's capacity for sucking up the abusive devaluation and their impressive fuel provision is tempting indeed. However, there is a risk of reaching that cr critical point and causing the ignition of the empathic supernova, which will have significantly dire consequences for lesser narcissists, lower mid-range and middle mid-range, difficulties for the upper mid-range, and for greater, either the greater will succeed or be forced into a stalemate and respond further in the way that I have described earlier in this video. As for me, the Ultra, well, I relish the challenge and the opportunity to demonstrate the assertion of my hegemonic dominance. Naturally, I enjoy the super empath coming to play because it gives me an opportunity to show them exactly the range and extent of the darkness that resides within me. And thus, that is the empathic supernova. A form of defence turned into attack, in particular circumstances, by the super-empath. Thank you for listening.